Man, that's fantastic. It's one of the beautiful things of life. Lattes, women, big bucks, and steak. Well, howdy folks, Michael Anthony here, Michael Anthony Outdoors. <laughs> so it's another day, bit of a rainy, chilly day, it's in the 40s, so kind of that wet spring-like weather. We're here on March 2nd, 2024. Man, spring is fast approaching. I've been hearing some gobblers um, a couple mornings, getting all wild, so they're getting into their breeding season and Soon enough, it'll be spring gobbler. Can't wait. Uh, but we got to continue our projects. We do have some projects to continue working on here in the woods of Ohio. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about what I'm doing today. So um, you see, I got all my equipment here. And you can see this is where our food plot was last year. It's a little over a quarter acre. And um, we have a stand in that corner, but we're going to bump that stand out. I'll talk about that some other time, but we're going to bump it out over here because we're going to do some uh, bedding enhancement down here. Let me kind of show you what we're working with. So first of all, we got some big, beautiful, giant oaks, uh, mostly white oaks. There's some red oak, and they usually do really good producing uh, acorns, good, good mass production, um, you know, every other year or so. Um, so we're not going to mess with anything on the immediate edge here. We don't want deer bedding right on the edge of the food plot. Um, so we're going to keep those big mast producing trees, big canopy trees up on the edge. And we're going to do some work down over the ridge here. So we have a point that comes out right here. You can see there's a deer trail here. They like to just kind of stage and come on up. There's an opening here. They kind of come up and start to feed. There is an ATV trail here. Again, we don't use this ATV trail during the hunting season, only during the spring and summer, um, in the winter or whatever. But during hunting season, this trail is not used at all unless we got to pick up a deer. So they'll come up that trail. There's also a pretty thick ridge over there, which gets a little more sunlight. But they only tend to be in that area very rarely. If there's like some sort of southeast wind or east wind they might bed on that side but they love it over here on this point which gets good morning afternoon sun um, early afternoon sun and then as the sun continues it starts to hit that other side of the ridge pretty good but um, I was just in here with the babies walking around yesterday and uh, just looking at the beds and there's lots of beds in here so there was one here um, there was some uh, deer fur in there just trying to see if I could see it right now. It's rained and stuff since we've been in here. There was some deer fur in there. I actually picked up and gave it to my uh, little girl Genevieve and she was kind of playing with it. There's some deer hair down in there. But there's a little bed here. It's like a nice little indentation. And you could see we are about probably 25 yards off the edge of the food plot. And you can't see where we'll be putting the tree stand, which is nice. You can't even see... You could kind of see maybe where the tree stand is through there because it's open, but we're moving that tree stand to the opposite side. Um, we don't really hunt that this plot much. I hunted it once in the early season last year. It's a great spot to get an early season doe or a late season doe on the food plot. Um, but what we're really trying to do here is we want this food here and we want the does to be bedding in this on this ridge because the bucks tend to bed further out. There's another ridge over there. It's more secluded. They bed there. They bed down deeper, closer to the creek bottom because all the food's up top here. So they might be bedding 100, 200 yards from here. And then we have our strategic food plots here with the does are up against them for the most part. So this stand up here is really just 
it's great for early season. I think in the middle of the rut, if you randomly hunt at that, you might get some sort of action. We definitely get some daylight pictures of big bucks cruising up here. Um, but it's not really a, I wouldn't say it's a key stand for, for big bucks. It's a key stand for seeing lots of deer, early season, late season, hunting right on the food plot. Um, we have other stands strategically located um, adjacent to this bedding area. And so that's one of the reasons I want to enhance that. That's where the big boys creep in during those daylight hours, staging to move in to uh, the, the feeding areas up here and check out the does. So, like I said, there's lots of, uh, there's beds down in here. You can see kind of where there's some, there's a bed here. There's some droppings in there. You could just kind of see where they're using different spots and it drops down this point here. And I just want to kind of show you what we got down here. So we got a mix of timber in here. Like we got some of these bigger, more mature trees. You can see some really big mature trees in here, but then we got some of this, you know, these saplings, pool timber. So we got good diversity. There's, there's maples, there's oaks, there's hickory, there's poplar. Um, there's all sorts of stuff in here. We even got this random, I think it's a red pine up there. Um, but as you come down here, there's actually a bench down here I wanted to show you. And we're going to actually start the project down here. And I'm going to explain, you know, what all we're going to be doing here. You can see where the leaves, kind of like a trail that comes up off this bench. So here is the bench. This bench is just an old ATV trail down here. We'll go ahead and check this out. Yeah, so right down in here. It's an old ATV trail. I don't use this ATV trail anymore at all. There was a huge oak that came down. I didn't mess with it. You're able to walk through there, but I can't get the ATV through there. Um, but this comes, this actually circles up to the corner of the food plot. And the deer definitely come up that way occasionally, depending on the wind. My neighbor's property is not far from there and he has really big mature timber. So it's just super open woods. The deer, they might move through there, but they don't really bed over there. They're gonna be bedding on my side. Um, and then it, once you see, if you get down here closer, this drops into a little gully, a little uh, kind of a stream runoff. And it's really thick in here. And there's trails coming up out of there. That next ridge over, we definitely um, have bucks that bed over there. They bed down on the point, they bed dropping down there's a nice thick bench that runs that way they bed over there and we have stands down here we have two stands actually three stands down as you get down into here there's a nice saddle right here great spot um, then we have another hundred yards out we have another stand kind of on a funnel on the outside of some bedding area over there um, just a lot of great strategic locations here. But those deer, the doe family groups, they like to bed up in here. But look how, you know, you get to see how open this is, right? I could see all the way up there, no problem. And when I turn and look this way, I could see all the way down here, you know, no problem. So what we want to do is we want to enhance this a little bit so that there's some screening because the access to one of my stands, and I might change it this year, but it's down, it's coming through on the opposite side of the ridge here. There's a pond. And I don't like to access directly through the middle of the property, but I really don't have any other options. There's one other option that circles around and comes in on the back side of the stand, and I might start doing that um, this coming year. I'm gonna ask my neighbor if he minds if I cut through a field that he has that borders me his field drops down a bit. So if I can get on his field, it'll actually keep me out of sight and I'll be able to circle into the stand in a less impactful way. Because a lot of deer movement, it's coming through here and kind of headed that way. There's bedding over there, there's bedding over there. We're gonna enhance the bedding up here. And this is just a great uh, pinch point funnel, saddle. Uh, there's a lot of trails that kind of meet up down in here. So we don't wanna, we don't want to mess with that too much. We want that to stay just the way it is. But if there's deer bedded up here, we don't want them to really see us. Now, you can't see the stand from here, which is great, even in the dead of winter. 
but we don't want those deer even if we walk in through here or we come in in the backside we don't want those deer knowing we're there and we want those bucks to be comfortable cruising through here and being able to scent check up here with a southwest wind and we could sit in that stand and intercept them from right here we want to be able to screen in that direction a bit we want to do some screening there so what we're going to do is let's probably take down some of these trees here I'm gonna leave some of the bigger ones. I like some of these big ones, especially some of these timber trees, like the oaks. But we're gonna start to knock down some of these, these smaller trees. We'll hinge cut them, pull them down. If anything breaks off, we'll just cut it up for firewood, but we'll open up this canopy a little more, even with these big canopy trees here. If we start to take down some of these smaller ones, we'll be able to get more um, brush growing up here, you know, early successional type brush growing up. Um, so that's what we want to do. We just want to thicken this area up a bit. We want to use some of these trees for hinges. We want to open the sky up a little more. And uh, it should help us out here. So let's get started. Fresh poop here. Could be turkey. You see that? It's still wet. Could be turkey for sure. Old hunter's coming. There he is. I see him. What are you doing, buddy? Hunt the bug. What are you doing? Here comes old Hunter, sniffing me out. What's up, buddy? Hey, you. What you doing, buddy? There he is. Hey, good boy. What's up, buddy? Go take a pee. There you go. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to do a little before and after scenario here. I'm standing. Here's that pine that I looked at earlier. There's my ATV. So I figured I'd just take it from this little spot here, but... We're going to keep the top edge open, but we will, I'm going to try to screen that a little bit with some hinge cuts. And then most of the bedding is a happening right here, right? It's the military crest. Like it's true. They definitely do that. And it's a little flatter. There's some flatter spots up here. So they tend to bed within 20 yards of here, um, historically. And so we're going to knock some stuff down that way, close that off a bit. We're going to knock some of this down, maybe on this side here. And then we're just gonna enhance this and kind of uh, do some hinge cuts, maybe open the canopy up a little bit so we can get some more regeneration in here, some brows, stuff like that. Uh, so it should be good. So I'll just kind of give you a scan now and then I'll come and stand in the same spot and do an after. Well, I'm all geared up. And as you know me, got my latte, baby. Mm. Man, that's fantastic. It's one of the beautiful things of life. Lattes, women, big bucks, and steak. All right, we're gonna drop down the ATV trail with some of the equipment here. And, uh, we're gonna start low, work our way up. So we got we got Big T headed out. Um, we're supposed to do a little project at the cabin here. It's been rainy and wet. I don't know if we're gonna do that today, but um, we are cooking a prime rib roast. Yeah, baby, it's gonna be good, baby. It's gonna be good. All right, so I'm just gonna kind of pull over here and uh, so we can get started. Oh, well, Hunter's still here. How about that? Hunter, you still here, you son of a bitch? I thought you would have headed back to hang out with the ladies. And our little man, Bronk. There he is. He's still hanging out. That's cool. He's feisty today. So am I. All right, let's get to cutting. Got this new uh, Echo Chainsaw Timberwolf. It's a badass saw. 20-inch blade. So... It's been cutting like butter, baby.
All right, guys, so we're taking a little break from that, that area we we're working on. And I just, I needed to come back over to another bedding area that I did a little bit of a habitat pocket in here. And uh, left a couple felling wedges that I need. So I'm gonna come over, grab them, and I'll show you what I did. So, so you can see how thick it is in here. And we're coming right up in here. This main deer trail that travels up in here. They like to bed in here. And we're about 40 yards from a stand that's on the edge of this bedding in kind of a pinch point. So I came in here and uh, opened this up. Look how totally open sky right here. So this is gonna generate real nice and thick. So it's just gonna get us a lot more of that hardwood regeneration. So this continues to be a good productive bedding. So this continues to be a good productive bedding area. Um, you can see we got this monster tree in there. I think it's a maple Absolute monster. There's another one up there But the rest of it's just real thick and there's a lot of little bedding spots in here. So The other nice thing is if we're up in that stand Deer are bedding and moving around in here. It'll prov it'll provide some screening too. So So we got this this big boy actually hinged I um I cut this last night and put the wedges in and I knew we had some rain moving in. So I was hoping the wind would blow this over and keep it connected. And it looks like we did. So hopefully that's enough to keep it alive for a while so that we get that regeneration in there because that provide nice screening. Plus this is gonna sprout up and provide the deer some browse. So these wedges are a little bigger and I'm going to take them over to where we're at. But you can just take a little look here. Right? We got a lot of briars and shrubs in here. We got some big trees. We got a lot of small saplings. Just real thick. You can't really see more than 20 yards. And over here, before I started this, you were actually able to see a good 30 yards or so. Um, so I dropped these right in line with where our stand is out there. So it's gonna give us more cover. It's gonna enhance this bedding. This ground's gonna get more sun. It's gonna sprout up some hardwood regeneration, shrubs, stuff like that. So it should be pretty good. And then all these stumps, they should sprout. A lot of these are just maples and they should uh, sprout up pretty good and those deer will be feeding on them too. All right, let's head back across the property to the other area. And I'll let you just kind of get a eyeball on what we did in here. You can see how nice and thick it is, but it's plenty of good bedding areas. These little little flat spots the deer were using um, actively. And, and what happens is, as we get into the rut later in October, man, those big boys start cruising this stuff. They start creeping up into it. And we got our stands located in prime areas to intercept with them. So, all right, we're going to head back out to the ATV and head on over to the other area. All right, guys, so I've been working for a while. Camera was was not turning on, so I said the hell with it. <laughs> so you didn't get to watch me do all this cutting, but um, just look at this now. Look at the cover we're establishing. Good horizontal cover. We're starting to poke holes in the sky here, right? There's still some big timber in here. There's some nice oaks, so I'm not gonna cut any of this big stuff. But we get good sun that comes up over here, the sun rises and it goes right up over here to the west, which is that way. So those holes that I'm creating will generate some of this stuff, shrubbery, saplings, maybe some early successional growth type stuff. But wanted to just show you how we're looking. You can see all this cover we're creating here. A lot of these stumps where I did the hinge cut or I just cut it off will continue to sprout hardwood regeneration off those stumps. Um, so the deer will browse on those, plus it'll create more cover. Um, so we got some good stuff going here. We're just gonna work our way up like this, hitting some of this small stuff and dropping it that way and this way. Um, and then we're almost to the, to the prime bedding area where they like to bed, which is right in here. So what we're gonna do is hinge cut and cut around it we don't really want big branches coming down on top of this. We'll put a few in there, but 
we want these bedding areas to be fairly open because they they kind of like it in this terrain to be able to get up and move if they need to so we don't want it too thick um, plus they don't get a lot of pressure so they're a little more prone to just bedding in the open uh, but what we do want to do is drop some trees towards the food plot just to create almost like a screen up there and we don't want them bedding up close to the food plot but they tend to bed about 30 yards in which is perfect so we're going to enhance this keep open the sky a little more drop some of these pull timber size sapling size hinge cut them drop them and get more sunlight on this ground that'll create more cover and browse and then uh, we'll kind of create almost like little cubbies right in here where they can um, they can move around they have a good escape cover they got good bedding cover browse and it should be good so hope you guys are liking the video so so far we had a big tree i was working on earlier down there we still haven't got that down i used the wedges the problem is you could even see it it's leaning it's leaning in the direction we want it to fall i don't know if you could see at the top there's a big oak branch from an oak tree next to it that's right in the crotch of the tree up there and i think that's what's holding it up so i don't want that thing kicking out on me it it's it's going to come down at some point i think some really good wind just enough pressure on that branch it's going to pull it down so we're going to leave that alone see if it comes down on its own uh, we tried using the winch but it, it didn't even budge it's amazing how strong one oak branch is to hold the top of that up. tree up the other thing we'll do we'll come back a little bit later after some of this stuff settles and before it really starts to green up in the spring and we will make sure there's openings we'll make sure the deer are able to move we don't want them to feel restricted so we'll make sure there's nice little openings if we got to cut some branches stuff like that um, you'll notice that I hinge cut different levels, right? Some's low, some's waist high, some's up chest high. Um, so we're getting that good horizontal cover. So we got good access to our stand there. Then this nice bedding cover will, the deer that are cruising down there, they'll want to scent check this, probably even come up and check it out. Um, so it's going to be good. All right, guys. We're going to start working on this end and going right into... The edge of the point over here. Guys, we're making good progress here. There it goes. That one's hinged real nice. Let's see if we can push this one over. That one's kind of hung up a little. We'll just pull her on down. You got this hinge pretty nice. 
we got a good hinge on this one here it's looking good guys looking pretty good Oh yeah, this is looking really good. And then once that big one falls down there, that should be plenty of horizontal cover. We got a nice hole in the sky, right? So we're gonna get a lot more sunlight on the ground here. And like I said, we'll come back and uh, clean this up a bit a little bit later maybe three four weeks we'll come in just make their, sure there's good access and movement for the deer in here all right cool let's keep going Another one bites the dust, baby. Yeah. Whew. It's looking pretty good, guys. We're gonna keep at it. Whew. All right, guys. Man, it's uh. So today's Sunday, March third, and it's uh. It's hot and sunny out. It's mid sixties. Beautiful, beautiful day. So I worked in here a couple hours yesterday and then came back, finished it up today. Um, so we probably put a good four hours of work into this bedding area. And so I'm just gonna show you uh, what we did here. So let me set my saw down. So I'm actually standing, here's the spot that I was standing in the beginning, the before and after shot. So starting up here, you could see a lot different, right? We knocked a lot of stuff down. We, we cut some stuff, we hinge cut some stuff. So we got some stuff blocking right on the edge of the food plot, but then it's a little open up in here where they like to bed. And then as you come down, I just did hinge cuts and regular cuts all the way down. I mean, look at this cover we have here now. If you remember, here's the ATV trail right here. And as I mentioned, I got a stand a couple hundred yards down there and they like to bed up in here. And so now we got tons of great horizontal cover. I did different heights of hinge cuts. 
So pretty much anything that was under eight inches, I hinge cut. I tried to hinge cut some of the bigger stuff like this, which it is still connected. So this might live, but um, the whole idea was part of this was to create more horizontal cover, create more bedding cover. We got a lot of holes in the sky now. There's some big timber in here, but we opened this up probably, you know, 20% more than it was. And look, it's afternoon and we're still getting good sun on here. So that means this is gonna really sprout up, regenerate. We'll start getting some early successional growth. We'll get hardwood regeneration. We'll get shrubs growing up really well here in the next few months. And by the time hunting season comes, this will be a lot thicker, a lot more secure for the deer that like to bed in here. And it's gonna give us some screening for our stand access down there. And it gives additional brows too. So we didn't touch any of the big mature stuff. We got some really great mature oaks in here. <sighs> a lot of big mature oaks that produce good ac acorn crops. So you have this bedding area here. There'll be good browse. You'll have mast. You have the food plot up there. We have stands strategically placed. It's gonna be good. Now, let me just take a little walk through here and show you what we got. So here's one of the, here's a couple of the beds that the deer were using. There was one right here. Let me move this branch that I knocked down. So right in here, this was a, a bed. It's a nice little flat area. So there was droppings and hair in here. You could see the food plots right up there. We got a lot more cover now. You won't be able to see the stand on the other side of the food plot. Um, so when you're sitting in this bed and you look downhill here, now you got a lot more horizontal cover. Not only will the deer feel more secure here, but it's going to give us some good cover. So it'll make the bucks move around a little more too. So a buck that used to scent check from downwind down below, he might actually come up here and meander through this, maybe pop out on the food plot, maybe circle around the ridge, pop out near another stand. Right, so we're creating more diversity in the woods, which is good. But other than that, let me just give you a little walk through, show you what we did here. So some of this stuff I'll be cleaning up later. Move this over here. So what we'll do is we'll come out maybe in a month or so before it really starts to green up. And we'll do a little bit of cleanup, right? Some of these existing beds, I knock some branches down into. You know, if they, if they like using those beds, I don't want to deter them from using it. This was another one right here. Nice little flat spot. So, walk down this way. And right now, it's pretty easy to walk through this. So we might not have to do much cleanup. You don't want it to be so thick where you can't walk through it, right? A deer needs to get through heavy cover. It's gonna go through heavy cover, but its preference is gonna depend on the terrain, right? We're in a mixed ag area, not a lot of pressure. So the deer don't need super, super heavy, thick cover. Now we do have some of that and they bed in it. Um, but the deer that bed here, I mean, they were bedding in open woods on this point, so. So this should be a little more inviting to them, but we wanna make sure it's not too thick where they don't feel like they can escape well. Um, so there's spots in here, like right here, where we might clear this out a little bit. You know, we might leave this here, but clear some of these smaller branches out. That way they have this tunnel under here. You know, we'll move this stuff here, clear this out. But you can see some of these briars and stuff that we're shooting up. This stuff's gonna come up a lot thicker now because we were poking some holes in the sky up there. Um, but down in here, right, we might clean this up a little. It's a little thicker in here. You know, take some of these lower branches off so they don't have a problem going through here. So I'm walking through it pretty good right now, so it's not too bad. It's perfect. It's a kind of a perfect setup where it's not too thick, where it's gonna make them feel uncomfortable because you can certainly get that. We still got that one big tree that we got to get down. 
it's being held up by an oak branch. So we're just gonna let that go, see if it comes down on its own. But there's uh, three, four other hinge cuts. So once that big tree falls, we have it notched and everything. As soon as that falls, that's gonna take the other ones down. There'll be a little bit more cover right there. But they're able to bed all up in here, all around here. And it's, and, it's, I, and I'm excited to see how, how it serves us. So they already liked bedding in here. All we did was enhance this. We're getting a little more sunlight on the ground. We're gonna have more food in here, more cover and um, good escape routes as well as good cover for bedding. So should be good. The other thing I'm going to do too is follow the existing trails. Um, there were some existing trails through here. You want to make sure the existing trails that they prefer to use are open still. So I'm out on the ATV trail now. And I believe there was a trail. I don't recall if there was one right here. I know there's one up here. Look at this good cover here. That's right, there's a trail up here. Let me just find it. Here it is. There's a trail right here. They come and they cross to the other side of this point. So, that seems to be open still. It comes right through here. It goes right through here. And they could hop right over this tree, no problem. There is a trail that also goes right here being that this is still connected I'm gonna wait and see if that survives but um we might try to they could easily hop over this but it might try to divert them around that but there's a trail that enters the corner of the food plot right here wow spring like weather I love it turkey season's coming up so stay tuned for that all right guys, thought I'd give you one more view. So this tree stands over here in the corner right now. We're actually moving it out to this tree right here. There's a lot more brush right there. We'll be able to drop behind the tree line and come in and get in that stand. And we'll have Egyptian wheatgrass on the edge. So we'll have plenty of cover getting into the stand. But you used to be able to see right through there, no problem. But you can see we hinge cut some towards the field here. We hinge cut some across some that way and so it's a lot thicker now and as some of this stuff greens up it's going to get real thick on the edge here and that's what we want we don't want those deer bedding right here um, there's still some trails open for them to come up this way right they can come through here or you know we'll clean some of this up but we have this oak hinged right here there's another oak next to it so we took this one, it's more of a subordinate oak. So we hinge that, so it'll continue producing, it should be good. But we got this cluster of hinge cuts here, so they should bed on the opposite side of this. And then if you come over here, we didn't do anything on this side. This big oak came down years ago, and um, it's been getting thicker in here just because of the hole in the sky, right? That was a huge monster oak, had two trunks. The other one fell the other way. And uh, because that hole is open in the sky now, there's a lot more sunlight. And you could just see all the shrubs coming up. So this is already getting nice and thick in here. Um, there's a natural trail that comes up from here. You can see it's nice and open. So those deer could pop out of their bedding. They can come up this trail. You could see right where the trail is. They can come right up here. And right here, my stand's covered. And as soon as they pop out here, I'll be right across the other, other side there. Um, there's some existing scrapes and stuff on the edge here um, But if you come this way, just look at all this Shrubbery that's growing. You can see all the sunlight hitting it. We're in uh, mid-afternoon right now Probably about three four o'clock late afternoon um, But this stuff's thickening up just because of how big that oak was And how it really opened up that sunlight to the ground um, So we're not doing anything over here. We have somewhat opening here the deer could funnel up this way, they can funnel on the outside of the bedding area and come up on the opposite side of the point. Either way, they'll be able to pop out right up here and we'll be there waiting for them. So, um, just thought I'd show you this side. There isn't much to do over here. We'll probably just leave this alone this year. Uh, but it's always a work in progress, right? We'll see how 
everything plays Just out with what we did this year. And if we have to do anything else Just in here next year, we will. So, all right, guys. 